on this computer. Getting started. Okay, let me shift this up a little bit so you can see the sign behind me. There we go. Okay, welcome everyone. This is uh, Rebecca here, your host for the Fireside Chat. I'm thrilled to be able to have one of my buddies on. Kathy and I have been friends. What, 10 years ago we met, Kathy? Oh, it's probably been, I think, since 2009. Yes. Yeah. Back in, yeah, way back in the day when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, Kathy introduced me to this way of eating that just, you know, to me, salads were rabbit food back then. So I was like, what are you talking about? You never eat this. You never eat that. Anyways, um, it was just like mind blowing to me, this little girl, you know, who was raised on macaroni and cheese and um, chicken nuggets. So <laughs> Kathy was the first one in my journey of food that showed me that there was another way and that it was worth pursuing. So um, here I am full circle all these years later, still doing the nutritarian lifestyle that Kathy introduced to me 10 years ago. But I, my journey's kind of looked like this. <laughs> so I just wanna encourage you, all of you that are watching, if you're here because you wanna learn more of the science behind um, why you should eat this way. What does Kathy do? What does um, Rebecca do that helps me stick to this um, for the long term? We're so excited to be that next step on your journey as you get going. And this fireside chat, as well as all of them, fit into a framework. And I'm going to pull up a picture so that you can see what that looks like. Because to me, um, you know, you can dump tons of supplements on something, but if you don't address the underlying causes, you're not going to feel true health. And so um, to me, there's, there's this, all of these levels and aspects of health. The first one being eating, eating for gut health, eating to live, not just living to, for your next meal. It's like the, this is the biggest foundation that we're working on here with Kathy and I tonight during the month of March. But there's other foundations too. We need to be moving to feel healthy. We need to keep a positive perspective. We need to keep our you know, environment and our internal environment cleaned out. We need to understand what's going on in our bodies. We need to work with trusted practitioners who will give us the remedies that we are looking for. And we also need to understand who we are, what our gifts and talents are, and serve the world in a meaningful way. When all of these foundations are stacked up and you're pretty well-rounded in them, you're going to see your health giving you the miracles that you've never felt before, feeling alive and thriving like you never have before. So with all of that being said, that's our backstory. Here's our front story. Foundation number one, recovering true health by eating well. And Kathy is our guest speaker. Her name is Kathy Hoskins. And um, I not only selected Kathy because of the um, 10 years of nutritional coaching that she's given me over the over time, but also because she's been on this journey herself since 1993, right, Kathy? Yes. Yes, 26 years of being um, mostly nutritarian, feet firmly planted on that first foundation of eating well. Um, Kathy also has three kids that she's raised over the course of that 26 years. And so we can ask any questions that we need to about family and nutritarian life. Um, also, Kathy has, you know, I love to learn everything that I can, but I haven't taken it to the level that Kathy has. She has done Dr. Joel Furman's full out nutritarian educational institute. Um, Kathy's graduated from that program, learning all kinds of things about the studies of um, diseases and how eating affects them. And so she's got this like vast knowledge of these foods and what they mean to our bodies. She's got all this practical knowledge of how to actually do it in the real world, how to stay on the bandwagon, you know, and the factors that influence um, life with this food whole journey. So um, that's enough for me. I'm excited to have you guys listen to Kathy. Kathy, welcome. I welcome, and I'm glad to be here. I, I, I have loved my interaction with Rebecca for many, many years, and, um, and I'm excited that although, yes, you had waves, um, you hung in there and stuck it out. <laughs> um, it, and, and then you were able to see and feel how worth it it has been. So, Absolutely. yeah, very thrilled. So I was excited to have you um, excited about it, even talking about our gut health, um, because I was a train wreck. Um, and that's what started um, 
my journey. Um, even searching, trying to figure out what I was, how I was going to feel better. Um, yeah, I how had, you even found Nutritarian Dr. Joel <laughs> Furman. What was going on for you? Well, and he wasn't the first one I found. Oh, um, he he came along into the picture about two years into my journey. Um, he he was just beginning to put himself out there. And um, he was not, his book was not one that I found initially. Um, the original book that I found was um, by the Diamonds, uh, Fit for Life. And, um, but what happened was I was in my 20s, um, had my first child had a major visual birth defect. So I was living at the University of Shands Hospital in Gainesville. Second child came along, actually volunteered for that, and um, thinking it was going to be better. And um, anyway, the kidneys started to fail, um, and and I stayed in denial um, of all the other health problems that I had until those kidneys started to fail. Are these and these your um, kidneys or your baby's kidneys? My kidneys. Your my kidneys. kidneys. So you're yes. caring for a special needs child, and you start failing. Yes. Okay. My kidneys began to fail. Um, they, my pregnancies were really hard on my body. Um, I had had three pregnancies at that point. I had two children. I had miscarried one. And um, each pregnancy, I had debilitating vomiting and nausea. Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to rely on IV therapy for at least eight weeks during the first trimester of all of my pregnancies. Um, and just had chronic kidney and bladder infections. And, um, and then when, of course, you know, you're treating those and you have the yeast infections and had the migraines and irritable bowel and acid reflux, fibromyalgia, depression, anxiety, um, hypoglycemia, um, polycystic ovaries to the point that I was having surgery about every year and a half, two years to remove those. Um, even had a fibroid in my right ovary the size of a baseball removed. So that was a fabulous incision. I was cut like a C-section um, in order to remove that one, plus two hernia repairs. So my well, abdomen... You were so young going through yes. all of that. Yes. And, you know, a cup, the, one of the hernia repairs came later in life. Um, but all the rest of that was all together um, in the 20s. And, um, and so it was when the doctors told me, they says, you know, this we've done, you've done, we've done everything we can do. Um, you need to start outlining your life and preparing for dialysis. Wow. And um, I had a, um, my goodness, my, my youngest was almost three at the time and the other was five and I thought okay that's not an option you know the first child had a visual birth effect that we were still living with and dealing with on a day-to-day week-to-week basis um, and um, you know but the doctors over at Shands reassured me I could hand him over to the state of Florida and I'm they would completely care of him. <laughs> and that made me very angry um, it was all I could do to physically drive the 45 minutes home, go home, pass out, and, and then got back up and packed my kids back up and took them to the public library that was in town. And um, What were you hoping to find at the public library? Well, that was the thing. You know, we didn't have the internet accessible back then. Right. So it was, it was like, <laughs> I know, I know. That's how old I am. We didn't have that, ex you know, it was – too costly. Nobody could afford to do it at that point. So it, we didn't even have that at the library. So it was pack the kids up, sit them down in the kids section in the library, the public library in the little town in Palatka, Florida, and keep them entertained and go over to the medical books, health and nutrition books. And I knew um, that I wanted to find something that correlated with my religious beliefs because in my religion, we have a dietary guideline and um, that we believe, you know, came about in the 1800s and, um, and was kind of revealed. And so or that was revealed. And so I thought, okay, I need to find something that parallels with that and find out if there are any um, stories of recovery um, where other people have recovered their health in the process of eating some way, doing something. Um, I had always been involved in the fitness industry. 
had always taken tons of supplements, done the protein drinks, which was another reason the kidneys were failing. Uh -huh. um, I was doing the standard American diet. I was doing the protein drinks. I was doing the crazy supplementation that the fitness industry promotes. And then you put that with an extremely um, horrible pregnancy where my body couldn't even get the nutrition it needed because I couldn't eat. Um, you know, and then and, and meat is very diff is very hard on the kidneys and um, all your animal products are. And so it was just like tearing my kidneys up constantly. And so I didn't know that, but um, anyway, so I found the book, Fit for Life, read it. And then when I was back at the University of Florida Hospital, Chans, um, within just a couple of weeks, because I was back there every, almost four or five days out of the week, and it was every week was like that. And it was like, took about a couple of weeks, and I came across um, um, an article from John Hopkins about those with dial those patients that were on, it was a study done, patients on dialysis. And they were able to delay needing a kidney transplant and they could stay on dialysis longer if they eliminated the animal products from their diet. Oh. So I believe God had his hand in that, put me at the right place in the right time and when I was ready, so between the book Fit for Life that I was reading at the time, trying to get through it, found that study, um, Divine Intervention, and then by then I wrapped up about the end of that book, and at the end of the book they mentioned an organization, and it was called the American Natural Hygiene Society. And, um, and there is, at the time, it was the longest standing vegetarian society in the U.S., Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, okay, I'd already read in this book where people had some major miraculous recoveries and they were repairing their health. And, and it was just a little, it was just a little bit. And so I wrote to that company, well, to that organization. It was out of Tampa, Florida at the time mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we didn't have email. Just so send off an email and hear from them the next day. Yeah, so it was like crazy. So, you know, I had to do snail mail and in a few days they wrote back and they gave me all kinds of information. They published a magazine uh, four times a year that had all the nutritional research posted in it to correlate with why to eat this way. Mm -hmm. In addition to recipes, in addition to a doctor's list of doctors um, who also practice this way. And um, anyway, so it was exciting. And they mentioned that they had a conference and, and it was coming up soon. And, and I actually had to rope in a friend because I was too sick to drive myself the three hours across the state. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I said, hey, you know, these are probably really crazy people. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's two days, but we're just going to do one because um, we don't know what we're getting into. I mean, you know, there might be tree huggers. They might be really, really weird. I don't really know what, I don't know what we're doing. Not that I have anything against tree huggers, but you know, I was really sick and, and it was like, I had already done everything, the fitness industry. I mean, I was hit up for everything possible in the fitness industry for years and had tried it out. And my health was not being purchased through a bottle. Um, it had declined. So wrote the friend in anyway and, and got over there. And we went over and um, people were discussing in between the doctor's lectures. They were discussing amongst themselves. They were like one big family. Uh, they were happy to see each other again. They had come from all over the U.S. to this conference. And they kept mentioning their D-Days. And um, finally, I got brave enough near the end of the conference that first day. I asked someone um, in between uh, while we were all chatting, and I said, so what are these D-Days? Um, and they looked at me like I was crazy, like, you know, you don't know. And I'm like, no, I don't know. This is all new to me. I don't know what a D-Day is. They said, well, those are the death days that our doctors had given us. Oh. And they went on to tell me about all their different diseases that they had prolonged their life. From. Some of them were weeks, some months, some years, some decades. Amazing. At that point, I said, whoa, okay, um, I need to give this an honest try. You know, they're not asking me to do something stupid. 
food. <laughs> you know, they're just saying eat a whole food. In fact, they didn't even use the word term whole food. Just eat real food in the state it was created. And, um, and that was kind of the way they approached it. And um, I thought, this is insane. And I thought, maybe, maybe I need to really give this some serious thought. Well, about that time, this older gentleman, who was white-headed, um, he, I'd seen him running around being the gopher during the whole conference, you know, setting up lunch and just getting everything that the doctors needed. And he was like all over the place. And he came up and he's like, you know, I've been wanting to introduce myself. This is who I am. And, um, and I asked him, you know, because he just radiated help. He just glowed and, um, he looked like maybe he was in his early sixties, but he had white, beautiful white hair. You know, I think he would, he was a redhead before. And I think redheads just think beautiful. Some of them just age beautiful. Their hair is just beautiful and white. And he had that. And, um, and, and I, so I asked him, it was like, um, so how long have you been eating this way? And he said, um, my whole life. And I went, no, nobody eats this way their whole life. <laughs> How did you know to do this? And he says, well, my parents taught me this way of eating. And, um, and I went, this is insane. I said, this, you know, how does anybody know to eat this way? And he's like, no, you just eat the food in the state that it was created. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, we've gotten so far away from that. And um, he had mentioned that he had outlived three wives. Um, Oh my goodness. He says, he says, I didn't force them to eat this way. Um, it was an option. And, uh, but he was, he was a very successful life insurance agent. Too. <laughs> so, long, enough, or long enough and you outlive everybody. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, and I, I just, you know, had to laugh about that because he was selling life insurance at the time. And, um, you know, and I'm pretty sure I'm thinking I remember reading when he finally did pass that he did. Um, he did give this organization a nice sum of money, wow. um, you know, in order for it, the message to keep going forward. The name of the organization now is called the Natural Health Association. Yeah. Um, and it's again, the American Natural Hygiene Society. You can find them on Facebook, YouTube. Um, I, I just love them. They're still my resource. I am, you know, a long time, a century, I think it's a century um, member with them, you know, um, just because they sustained my life because there were no other resources to tap into at yeah. the time. And nobody so, was telling you that you had options except for them, right? Exactly. They were the only ones. My doctors thought I was insane. They told me to spend my money on psychiatric <laughs> evaluation. <laughs> um, actually, I was told that a few times by different doctors. You just need to spend your money on therapy. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know I need money for that too. But, you know, this is, this is working. Um, you know, because yeah, so I was, you, you said a few things I want to go back and ask you about. So, yes. First of all, you, you go to this conference and you feel this hope that maybe, you know, eating the way that they eat can help heal your kidneys so that you're around long-term for your children, right? So you, like yes, the studies are filling your mind with hope, the, you know, what the doctors have to say, and then like the, you know, people's like living, breathing stories that are, yeah. you know, uh, proof in front of you. It's all coming to hope. So when you went home, what did you do first? How did that, you know, getting started, what does that oh. matter like? <laughs> okay, see, and that's where it gets crazy. Oh, and one of the big things they pointed out to me was your body is acidic. Okay. So you need to eat a whole food plant-based and eat as much raw as possible if your body can tolerate it in order to make it more alkaline. They said if you can make it more alkaline, your body is going to heal itself. And they kept it simple because they knew I couldn't handle any more information. And I was so sick. In fact, as I saw that older gentleman, oh, by the way, that older gentleman that I thought was in his early 60s, mm -hmm. he was in his 90s. Holy smokes. Yes. When I asked him his age and that was the slap in the face, palm to the head. It's like, okay, seriously, this has to, I have to give this a good effort, no matter what. Outliving and, three wives, zooming around yeah. this conference, 
He, yeah, and here I was withdrawing because, of course, all we had were real food to eat there. None of my junky processed food, none of my crazy supplementations from the fitness industry, none of my potions and drinks. So I was going through detox so bad. Wow. It, I had a migraine. I was nauseated. I was just horrible. I hurt all over. And I thought, okay, I'm 29, and I just feel like somebody just go dig a hole in the backyard, you know, and yeah. throw me in. Um, you know, and he just was so vibrant and had so much energy and he was just living life so effortlessly and even just, um, their brains, their, just the way they interacted was very calming. It was very kind. Um, it was, they just, you could feel their stability. You could feel that they were grounded. They weren't all, their hormones were not all over the place. Um, you know, that was something that stood out to me too, because I could feel that, oh my gosh, my hormones are everywhere. I just want to wring somebody's neck one minute and then, you know, I'll take you out the next. <laughs> um, but I could see they were very stable and, um, that's a huge they, benefit. A lot of people come to this, this, uh, style of eating for the mental health benefit. Yes. Yes. I had no idea. I was just hoping that I could keep the kidneys from failing. Um, didn't even care if I got off the medication. Um, it was like, if, if the medication is still working, that's an okay compromise for me, but I just want to be able, um, to function a little better. I don't want to have to go on dialysis. And, um, so got home, threw myself right into it. Um, but I was so sick and I was detoxing so heavily that literally all I could do was drink juice. And um, so I was juicing and thank heavens I lived in Florida so I could go right around the corner and there was a farmer's market, um, a roadside farm stand, a produce stand. And um, so I would go over there and whatever was the ripest fruit um, and the cheapest, <laughs> so it was in season, um, I would buy boxes of it and I would go home and that's literally what I would eat. Um, because it was like, okay, I can't, my budget was so tight because I was dealing with a child with major medical issues. Um, I wasn't working, wasn't capable of working. And so it was go to the nearest farm stand, buy up a, a box or two of whatever's the least expensive and just eat on that. And, um, and so most of it was a lot of juice. Um, you just eat because, and then after a few weeks, I could start eating the whole food. And I could transition to that. Didn't even know about smoothies yet. So it was, but my body couldn't digest. My digestive tract was so messed up that I couldn't even digest the fiber in an orange or an apple. It had to be juiced in order for me to, to be able to digest it. Okay, I'm writing this down. So sometimes when people start on this pathway, you know, the, the bulk and the fiber, um, can create stomach distress and it can hold them back from, you know, moving forward. So I'm writing down that, um, before you could handle the fiber that you just started with juice and it helped, it helped you to get on the, on the right path, right? Yes. It continued to help my body work through the detox. And, um, you know, often if I, even my daughter, I, one of my, my older daughter, she has Crohn's and we didn't know that until she was in her twenties. Um, each, there were times that she would have a Crohn's flare up that there was one time she called me and she was two and a half hours away in Rexburg. And it was like, you know, she couldn't shut, she couldn't shut the diarrhea off. And, you know, so we had to figure this out. We had, you know, and I thought, well, wait a minute, if you're putting fiber in, that is going to make the bowels continue to move. I said, you know, what if we juice? And so I'm thinking we did this a, a few times with her. I can't remember how many, you know, cause as a mom, you're just dealing with the, the issue at hand. Um, but I would, we would juice, we would juice. And by then I knew better, you know, I could do combinations that were healthier and stuff. And it literally shut down the diarrhea within, I'm thinking two days. Um, so, you know, and one time I think it was three. And, and so you think that with all those liquids, like that, that would increase diarrhea, but it didn't, huh? It didn't. And, and the blessing was too, with, with the Crohn's, anytime you're done with an autoimmune disease or the fact that you were just so sickly, um, you know, and I know, uh, you know, some, 
some dietary recommendations and stuff. They're like, oh, don't juice. You know, it's bad for you. Well, it depends on how sick you are. Um, you know, the juice, your body can immediately, your digestive tract can immediately start to absorb those nutrients through juice. It doesn't have to work any harder. You know, and that's the thing. When you're that sick, your, your body, your digestive tract just can't break that down to absorb it. And the really good friend of mine also that hauled me over to that conference initially, many years later, one of her children had brain cancer. And she has told me the story, love her to death. Cindy, if you ever watch this, still love ya. Mm -hmm. um, so um, she had told me, she said, you know, they had given her, her son a month to live and they were going to send him home to die. And she said she remembered this conference. And she remembered the juicing. And so she started giving him juice. And she said almost immediately she noticed him improving. So there is a place for fresh, raw juice. In okay. your well, not be water. afraid. <laughs> yes, don't be afraid. And, and even my daughter with Crohn's nail, that is one of the things that um, is in her dietary protocol that Dr. Furman, um, his associate, Dr. Benson, who we conferenced in, uh, with, um, he, he says, you know, every day she should be having some fresh juice. And uh, she's been able to throw her Crohn's into remission a few times. Um, and actually, she's had her first baby this last year, which is, you know, which is just awesome. So, um, so yeah, you know, this, this way of eating is amazing. But yes, the digestive tract was, my whole body was so acidic, that had to change. And, and so we know, you know, one of, one of the many reasons why we want to eat this way, you know, there's like so many positives. Um, but look at the negatives, you know, and that was something I wanted to touch on just briefly today, you know, tonight too, is um, we already know uh, if this way of eating is based on research and it's not biased research um, and it's not just done by one doctor, one university. Um, this has been done by multiple organizations, doctors, people, you know, researchers around the world um, that we already know that this standard American diet weakens our immune system, causes food sensitivities, allergies, throws off the microbiome, you know, throws off our hormones. Um, we end up with nutrient deficiencies um, and even our ability to absorb the nutrients um, and that, that was me. I couldn't even absorb the nutrients, but I couldn't even break down. Sorry about that. I could have silenced my phone before because sorry. No. Abby. No. Um, I'm this, writing down these things. They're going super fast. Um, oh, so me, you need me to slow down and I'll slow no, down. No, you're fine. Eating standard American, um, food gives us predictable diseases. It throws off our microbiome and our hormones. Yeah. Um, yes, we end up with allergies and well, you see me, I've got, we'll, we'll discuss the reason why I'm having to, uh, take care of my nose. That was a mold exposure last year. Um, so maybe we should just touch on that now so I don't forget it. Um, but our gut is so affected by these processed toxic foods that, um, have become the standard American diet. Um, you know, and we know also the research is out there too, that if you eat this way and you are eating a plant-based diet where you're eating the vegetables, the fruits, the legumes, the raw nuts and seeds, and the whole grains, you're actually promoting the good bacteria to grow in your digestive tract. If you are eating animal products, eggs, dairy, meat, you are actually promoting the growth of the bacteria that consume those animal products, which a byproduct of that is the TMAO. And I'm not even going to go into the long name of that. If they want to, there's Dr. Greger has an amazing video on his site, nutrition at nutritionfacts.org. Mm -hmm. If you put in gut health, love his little short video clips. I don't binge watch crazy shows on TV or anything. I love to binge watch <laughs> nutrition that board. So that's a great site where anybody can go any time of the day or night. It's free. He made it free. Um, he's not going to charge anything unless, of course, you want to purchase his book, How Not to Die, and his cookbook, How Not to Die. But all those proceeds go back in to keep this his information out there and readily available. 
to everyone. Um, I will tag that website in the bottom so you guys know how to, you know, learn more from Dr. Greger. Yes, back. and I want to hear that you're binge watching nutritionfacts.org. <laughs> totally. Um, but that way, up. that way you can prove to yourself that it's just not some crazy lady that changed her diet 26 years ago, and survived possible kidney failure. Um, but it's actually there's hardcore information to confirm and and to prove it. But that TMAO, um, that byproduct that is produced in our gut from eating animal products actually makes us higher at a higher risk for stroke and heart attack um, and even death. Um, even it decree if we're eating a huge volume of animal products and or we bump it up where we're eating a you know which is a standard American diet it shortens our life. I mean, we already know, even within a three year window, they did some great studies and Dr. Greger, you know, he's got that out there. Love to listen to his, um, that research and those studies. He simplifies nutritional research. So you're not bored by it. He makes it humorous. Um, and you can find him on YouTube also. Um, you know, but a lot of people ignore the idea of, or the fact of it, of the financial burden it is to continue down the path of, um, eating this way, um, the, the standard American diet way. Um, you know, it has broke my heart over the 26 years of the many people I've crossed paths with. Um, you know, they say, you know, I love this. I love that. I'm not going to give that up. And, um, you know, and they're really, really sick. Um, and often they'll come to me when they are um, very close to death. And, and, and I have, have had many many wonderful people that I've known pass because they've waited too long. Um, and, um, but that financial burden, the last 20 years of our life, if we continue to consume the standard American diet, the last 20 years of our lives for the majority of us will be the most costly health wise. Um, and because our medication amount goes through the roof, um, hospitalizations, surgeries, um, I heard a quote the good. other day that said that our good habits cost us now to like yes. begin a new habit costs us now, but our bad habits, the cost is in the future. Yes. And that's that's totally what you're saying is completely resonating with what I'm going, you know, right now I'm going to CNA school, which is nursing assistant classes. And they teach you, you know, the ins and outs of a long-term care facility and a nursing, yes. basically nursing homes. And, you know, just being, in the place with these people seeing that they're still alive, but suffering greatly, yes. you know, it motivates me even more. So Kathy, you, you, um, you come into this lifestyle, you're juicing, you finally get some food ideas figured out, but there weren't like a million vegetarian cookbooks back in the day. <laughs> oh, heavens no. I didn't even know to look for that. Um, but no, there were, there was, I think vegetarian times has been around for a while. So I think they were, but I didn't have the money to even do that. And, and that's um, another thing I really wanted to ask you about. So many people that, you know, get started this, um, you know, because I encourage them or whatever they see, read a book, watch a documentary and they're like, I'm going to start it, but I'm so worried about the cost of it. Um, but I, I just heard you say you had almost nothing and you still, I did. I had nothing. I had so nothing. Talk to and, me about if someone says I can't do it, it's too expensive. What would you say back? You buy what's in season, buy bulk, and keep it simple. You don't even need a recipe. And this is something over the 26 years, oh my goodness, I've got a whole slew of recipe books and, you know, um, ton online. And I love Audible. So I have a whole huge library in Audible too. Um, Me too. But, it, <laughs> but it has come full circle. Um, I had to start with nothing. And so it was like, okay, what is in season? Because that's going to be the cheapest. And that's what I would do. And I would buy up a bunch. And actually to this day, I still do that. Um, if you know, I will, I know that I need to be eating all these good things. You covered G bombs in your fireside chat number five, which is really good. Um, you know, but you've got all these great, um, fruits and vegetables. So eat as much of them as you can. If you can eat them raw, eat them raw. Um, if you can't cook them, make them where you can digest them and enjoy them and then work the, the raw in. Um, like I will go, my husband and I will go to the farmer's market here. Um, we often shop at Walmart. Um, 
you can buy organic there but I don't always buy organic because it's not in my budget. Even to this day, my new husband just finished grad school. We just moved again. Um, this is my eighth address since September of 2015 when I divorced. Um, you know, I, all I can do is just smile about it because God has intervened in every way. Some amazing positives have happened in every place that we've gone. But, but if I can, you know, we, we buy it in bulk. If we can buy it in bulk, and we buy it inexpensive. In fact, I'll try to turn my laptop real quick just so you can see my veggie baskets. Let's see if you can see them. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Those are my veggie baskets. It goes clear to the floor. So, so what I tell people in doing this, you're not going to stick with it. If you're doing a gourmet, a vegan, nutritarian recipe every day, every week, or even every month, it's, it's probably just going to be too much for you. Um, and it's too costly. So what I tell, I have always told people, buy up the bulk. Make sure you're getting your greens. Put the money into your greens. And often the cabbages and things like that are least expensive. Frozen. Make sure there's no salt, oil, or sugar in the frozen. It is very cost effective. In fact, maybe you saw the freezer. There's a chest freezer over by that veggie um, basket. There is a chest freezer. My husband and I being in mold for a year um, last year, not knowing that's what it was. Um, we have always, we, because we eat so healthy, that's how we knew it was something environmental because my husband and I were the perfect lab rats going into my mother's home to take care of her um, and help out. Uh, we were sick within a month. We felt like we had the flu, strep, um, horrible body aches, inflammation, respiratory issues. And we were like, what is going on? You know, we both are medication free. You know, what is happening here? And we couldn't figure it out. It never, we, it just never, and I grew up in the South, but we had no idea that there were serious issues with mold in my mom's house, making us horribly sick. Um, you had these symptoms pop up that were so far out of the ordinary because you normally when you eat well, when you eat nutritarian, you don't and we were sick. Aches. We didn't don't, get sick. Yeah. So this you you had you knew something had to be going on because you never get these symptoms, right? Yes, exactly. And that's why my voice is still a little hoarse sounding. Um, we've been out I of it. Hear your beautiful <laughs> southern accent. That's all I need. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's a little bit hoarse still um, because we've been out since mid-November of last year, uh, but we spent a year in a moldy environment. And mold literally embeds itself in your digestive tract and your brain. And so they really believe that the doctor that saw me really believed that uh, my mother's dementia was um, brought on partly because of her long-term exposure to mold, which nobody knew. Let's, it wasn't, let's, let's, it let's, wasn't, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, it just wasn't, it wasn't anything like out of a horror story. It was very subtle. So it got past everybody, including us. It took us a year. We were slow learners. It took us a year to figure it out. Oh, dang but, <laughs> but so lots of, lots of work since November, my husband and I, in reboosting our immune system because it weakened our immune system, made us terribly sick. Um, I joked about a feeling like I had an NFL football in my abdomen. Uh, there was weight gain. Um, you were very tired and had, you were just lethargic, um, very sickly, and we just could not figure it out. So, yeah, I put on about 24 pounds last year. Um, I, can't, I can't even I, imagine you being that much heavier. Like, you are such a, you know, small, slender person. Well, I'm about, I'm, yeah, I'm back down. I, well, I think I have about 11, I have 11 pounds to go to, to fully eliminate it all. Um, it's just been a lot of work. Um, so, so once, but again, it, it, we had to get the gut right in order to heal. Um, yes. so again, I was back and like, okay, I'm back dealing with the gut again. Um, you know, it's like, don't uh, undermine that. Um, you know, often probiotics are helpful, especially when you're still eating that standard American diet. Once you don't have a crazy mold exposure <laughs> or, you know, you're on antibiotics and, I've had years that I've never had to use a probiotic. Um, so because this way of eating actually boosts the production of the good flora and in your digestive tract. So you don't have to spend the money on that. 
um, which is really nice. Um, you know, it's been nice. Well, and long story short, yeah, by me shifting my diet when I came home from that crazy conference, um, I was off all medication in six months. So it was totally worth it. I was back to running. That's I was so beautiful. Yeah, I was back to getting taking my kids to the beach, uh, which is about a 20 minute drive away. But we were actually able to get out and have fun. Um, in fact, we would sugarcoat ourselves. That's what we that's what I called it. Uh, we would put the sunscreen on when we left the house. And my son, that was his favorite thing to do, is get there. And I actually could roll in the sand dunes with them. So this sand, the white sand would stick to us, you know, and we'd sugarcoat. That was the only way I ate sugar. And it was actually beach sand. But um, it was just, it was wonderful to be off the medication and to heal. And, um, and Kathy has such this contagious, you know, vibrancy that as she's, you know, over the last 26 years since she's found that true health herself, you know, she just attracts people that, and it's so hard, you guys, it's so hard when you, when you made it to this point where you feel so good and then you see, you know, another fellow human being that feels so awful, you know, with all of the predictable things that come along with the standard American diet, like it, it feels like when I'm reading, it feels like just numbers, like crazy numbers, like, you know, uh, Kathy, tell us some numbers of like death statistics and things like that, that are just scary. Oh. Well, you know, that's, I know, trying to recall numbers off the top of your head like that. Um, well, you know, we're looking at a heart attack about every three seconds. Um, you know, here, the cost, the financial cost of our healthcare organization here in the U.S., just from diabetes alone, is through the roof. And, we, you know, and again, you know, I'm not going to be able to roll those numbers off the top of my head. That's okay. um, I'm thinking but, one of the dollars is spent on health care. But, you know, like. but yeah, that's why our health care system is failing. And one of the things I loved about this group of people that I ran into way back then, they referred their one of their uh, statements that they made is health care is self care. Mm, not sick care like we receive mm -hmm. from the system, but taking care yeah. of ourselves. Yes, is self care. When you read these books and go to those conferences and you and you hear all of the statistics and the numbers of like we're dying from strokes, we're dying from heart disease, um, we're you know dying from complications of diabetes, and we don't have to die from that. We don't have to get sick. We don't have to get demented. Um, and but that's like just numbers, you know. But then you meet the real people that are going through those heartbreaking illnesses, and it's really and, hard, and like, they'll even be drawn to you, Kathy, because you're, yeah. you know, you're so healthy, you're so vibrant, you must be doing something right, um, yeah. and, you know, just like, over the years, Kathy's attracted this um, growing group of people that are just like, what are you doing? I have to do what you're doing, right, Kathy? Yes, and actually, there is a group, um, a support group, a monthly potluck that's still going on that I started when I lived in the Burley Haven area for over 20 years. Um, love, love, love the people in Idaho, the positive people that I connected with. Um, and Rebecca, we do Hayes, exist. Is one of them. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, I just need to, you know, get my life, you know, calm it down a little bit so I can go travel and visit everybody more. Um, that that's one of the things on my goal, but uh, one of, one of my goals. But um, but yes, there is a potluck still going on. It will be uh, April's will be in Twin Falls. So if anybody wants to, um, you know, contact me after this, um, just let me know at any time. Um, and How I'll would you like it. us to contact you, Kathy. Well, there's a phone number and I literally will throw my phone number out there. Here it um, comes. <laughs> okay. And it's still an Idaho number only because I've moved so much. I had to have something consistent. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So it is 208-260-1500. Now, if they're a little shy and they would rather contact me through email, my email is recoveringtruehealth at gmail.com. Um, I also have a Facebook page. It is Recovering True Health. Um, and then I even have a private uh, support group um, that's on Facebook too. So if they're interested in tapping into that where I do have recipes and um Anyway, been a little busy in the last year with mold poisoning and caring for my mom and that, and then just adjusting to a new marriage. 
So, um, but you will see a lot more activity out there here real soon. Um, this last move is, has happened. And, um, you know, because I, I really love connecting with everybody. And, and there have been many people back there in that area um, that have gotten, have turned to this way of eating reverse some of their serious health issues. My own mother spent about a year and four months with me in Idaho. Um, took her from 211 pounds down to 130, and she didn't go hungry. That's another thing about this way of eating, that if you're eating whole food, plant-based, SOS-free, um, you are not going to go hungry. And your body will naturally rid itself of the fat that's holding those toxins in your tissues and you will your body will naturally adjust to where it needs to be that was another reason why I put on the weight when I was again just recently exposed to mold for a whole year um, my body was so sick it was holding on to everything and that and, goes right back to the gut you know yes, right my body was trying, yeah mm -hmm. my body was trying to say let's hold on let's make store more fat so I have somewhere to put all these toxins and and that's exactly what it did so it was it was crazy and but I can't blame all of it on the mold but it was the mold making me feel horrible which led me to not exercise as much I was too sick um, you know there were a few times I had some deviances in my diet because my brain was like I want to feel good right now mm -hmm. um, so, um, and it was like, what am I doing? Why am I reaching for these things? Now I feel worse. Um, you know, and so that's one of the blessings of eating this way. Once you've cleaned your diet up, you've gutted, you've got through the detox period because you will feel worse more than likely before, you know, first before you feel better and, um, gut through it. It is worth it to clean the gut up, make it become more alkaline, um, you know, emotionally, like I, I mentioned, you know, you just are more stable. You can handle stress better. Um, that was one of the things that I realized I was, um, this way of eating, um, psychologically, we need to realize that that plays a huge, um, part in the quality of our life and health, um, not just mentally. And, um, I was, nine years into that first marriage when my body was failing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, and being that sick. Um, by eating this way, I realized that I could start to think clearer and recognize where I was, what was going on. I was able to not have the depression. I was able to pull myself out of that by this way of eating. And then I could start even, I, I didn't even feel like exercising. And so it was one of those things that it was like, get the food right, detox. Now I can start to feel better or I can start to move. Um, and, and again, relived that this last year through mold, that part of it. But um, well, I have so, a follow up question about that. Yeah. What yeah. would you, um, we're coming up really close on our hour here. I want to um, ask just a few more nitty gritty things. Yes. What would you say to someone who's fallen off the bandwagon? And like you said, like this mold came up and you had to like kind of start over. Like, what would you say to someone that is in the position of wanting to start or start over? Keep it simple. Make sure you have fresh salad in your fridge. If you can't digest that, have greens. And if you and put them in a green smoothie, make sure you're eating that pound of raw vegetables a day if you can, if you can't, cook them. Um, but don't do the salt, oil, and sugar. Um, make sure you're eating fresh fruit every day. Make sure you're eating some legumes, even if it causes too much bloating and gas, which the mold, oh my goodness, I couldn't even eat legumes for two months. It was because my gut was in so much, it had so much inflammation. And so you might only be able to eat a fourth a cup a day or a half a cup a day. Start there. And dried beans are cheap. Um, cook up bulk amounts so that you're, you can do it and it's in your freezer, it's in your refrigerator. So make sure you've got salad. Do, you know, whether if you're just putting fresh fruit on it instead of a dressing, um, you know, or if you can get some gourmet vinegars, but that, that's expensive. Um, do potatoes. People, they say, oh my gosh, you're going to gain weight. I'm like, no, I ate 
to air fried. Um, in fact, the last couple of mornings, because it's been chilly here in South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, I think we've been in the 40s. <laughs> So I will, roast, I will roast up huge sheets. I will fill my oven literally with sweet potatoes and other roasted vegetables. Roasted vegetables, just take it over the top. If you have a problem eating vegetables, roast them in the oven at 350. Um, it's amazing. Do a bulk amounts. Do a grain. And then do a bowl. Often people refer to it as a Buddha bowl. So put the put the brown rice or the potatoes or the grains in it and then add the vegetable, the green vegetables and then add um, any of your other vegetables in there and your beans and legumes. You can top it with a few nuts and seeds or a dressing made from that. It's all in one bowl. And all you did was cook up a huge batch of rice, potatoes. Maybe you even have the bags, steamables, throw in your microwave to eat your greens. Um, you know, your frozen fruit, throw it in a smoothie. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be expensive. And have the food prepared. Take at least one day that you're going to get. say, okay, all I'm going to do is do two hours, and I'm just going to cook up a bunch and do some batch cooking. And that's one of the things I want to do some videos of in, on my YouTube, so we'll have to link that together so I can show you how easy it is to do up enough food for you to eat on through the week, even if you're the only so one in the family. Yes. I mean, especially like there's the recipe overwhelm of getting started. Like if you begin and you think you have to eat everything new and everything different every day, a new recipe, it can be really overwhelming. So yeah. I think that the batch cooking that uh, the rest of us kind of, we learn over time that we need to do um, batch cooking and that's better. Um, at least like for our brain space, like why cook five times? Why not just cook once? Exactly. So helpful if you could help us, Kathy, to see that. Multiply the recipe. As Kathy, you know, pumps out some videos, I'll just kind of keep putting them on this. So if you if you're watching this tomorrow, if you're watching this six months from now, you'll get to see that. Well, we're right, right up close to where we need to be um, cutting out. You can see my kids are they've reached their end of their tolerance. <laughs> Love it. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us, Kathy, before we finish off? Um, no, other than just start looking for me on, I do, I've had a YouTube channel for a while and um, just have not slowed down to utilize it, but you will start to see some videos and I'll try to make it super easy, show you how to do this bulk food prep. Um, it's Recovering True Health and Weight is the YouTube channel and Recovering True Health is the Facebook page. Um, again, they have my phone number and my email if you want to reach me either way. Um, I'd love to help you through. Um, show you how easy I know, I know some tricks and tips um, to keep it simple, keep it less expensive. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and your encouragement. And just again, Kathy, giving us that hope. It always starts with hope. No one changes their diet and eats salads all day or, you know, I don't eat salads all day, but no one eats a big fat salad instead of a hamburger unless they have hope that it's going to do something for them. Right? Exactly. Well, Get their blood work done. Have a lipid profile done before you start. See where your cholesterol is. Then, if you're about ready to throw in the towel, do another one. Um, I had um, started eating tater tots three times a week when I moved to Idaho. It was just a one serving three times a week. I cut it out, dropped my total cholesterol 37 points in four weeks. Wow. What we're putting in our body makes a huge difference. It so, does. Don't get overwhelmed. Keep it simple. Good, good call. Keeping it simple. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. If you'd like to see more videos like this, if you have suggestions of exactly what kind of meal prep you'd like to see or a specific topic, please do message me or private or um, private message or send me an email to know, um, to let me know what you'd like to see. Also, if you want to see the rest of these fireside chats are all uploaded, um, onto YouTube under the naturally strong channel. Um, also, if you want to follow on Facebook, Naturally Strong is my Facebook page there. And if neither one of these social media, you know, outlets is easy for you to keep track of if you're just not a social media gal um, or guy, then um, sign up for my email list um, and you will get shoots, you know, to your inbox twice a month that just tells you the videos that we've had going on. And so you don't have to subscribe to anything that way. So thank you so much for joining us and we'll talk to you next week. We have another gal that's joining us. She changed one big thing and dropped weight, looked awesome, started feeling so much better. So join us next week to find out what that one thing is. 
Kathy, thanks again so much. We'll see you guys later. Thank you. Good night. Good night.